A lot of people do want to go non-surgical. We also see much younger crowd now coming in. They don't want to wrinkle more than the 40 plus population. Wow. Hi guys, Stella Ringer here, your chief of Aging Fabulous, and can you believe we're already at season two of our podcast? Zeal Aging Redefined, the podcast continues to inspire women to age with boldness, confidence, and kick-ass positivity. We're here for you to educate, inform, validate, that maturity brings strength, wisdom, and superpowers. And we always want to make sure that we have the topics that you want to hear from us. So today we're going to talk about kind of cosmetic surgery and some of the myths we want to demystify with our guest, who's an expert in this industry. And we've got Dr. Angelina with Thank us you. here today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for bringing me in. How are you? I'm amazing. How yeah. are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm, you know, this will be informative and education for me as well. So we're going to get into it in a second, but I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your practice. Sure. Well, my name is Dr. Angelina Pastoyev. I'm triple board certified surgeon uh, and my practice specializes in weight loss surgery, adrenal surgery, and plastic cosmetic surgery. Mm -hmm. I don't do all of it by myself. Mm -hmm. I have about eight surgeons in my practice mm -hmm. uh, in four locations in okay. two different states. Mm -hmm. And between all of us, we can basically be like one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. I see. We can I take see. care of all of you. We can make you lose weight. We can help oh. you get rid of extra skin. <laughs> we can beautify you, get rid of your hemorrhoids, whatever. <laughs> we got it. Um, and we are growing. Uh, there's a huge need for those uh, practices like ours with mm -hmm. high tech technologies, mm -hmm. new technologies, mm -hmm. um, helping people of all ages, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. all ethnicities, mm -hmm. and um, also people with different ins insurance status. Yeah. So we specialize actually with the, a lot of our patients are uninsured, underinsured, self pay. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Not just for cosmetic surgery, uh -huh. for any type of surgery. Okay. Which okay. pretty much very hard to get in regular hospitals. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So, you know, I know you've been in Atlanta uh, for a while. And like you said, you have several different practices. And again, we're going to kind of get into demystifying kind of the cosmetic surgery culture, I guess I should say. But before we get into that, I have a question for you that I ask all the guests. Uh, because as you know, Zeal Aging Redefined is all about redefining aging mm -hmm. and ensure that we're celebrating it. You know, it's a natural part of life. You can't run away from it. I don't care what you do. You it's just try. a natural part <laughs> of life. And we're going to do this beautifully and gracefully is, is really kind of our mission and to provide tips and tools for women 40 plus just so they're educated around things. So the question, though, I have for you is... Aging out loud. Tell me what aging out loud means to you personally and how it manifests in your life. Well, I'm probably going to take, I don't know which <laughs> way I'm going to take it. <laughs> but it's okay, either way. For me, good. aging out loud probably going to have something to do more with an attitude mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. your outlook on life. Yes. Rather than physical Correct. aspect of it. Yes. Yes. So for me, it's just more freedom, mm -hmm. you know, more choices. Yes. <laughs> Less care about what people think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what it's going to mean for me, because yeah. physically, mm -hmm. I don't want to age. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like I said, it's a natural part of life, so it's going to happen. But at the end of the day, you know, it's whatever's best. For that person, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I may be a little bit biased. You. you know, I, I literally course, got that stuff be, in my you're office. Gonna be, so. Yeah, you're going to be a little biased, <laughs> which is fine, which is fine. And let's kind of get into that, Dr. Angelina, as it relates to just this culture uh, around cosmetic surgery. Because I will say, you know, even for me personally, it's like I know the days of everybody looks the same. You know, it's like you're not smiling. So how has the the culture changed, I guess. 
Well, it's culture, but also techniques okay. have changed. Okay. I think our understanding of beauty standard has mm -hmm. changed. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, when I'm teaching others, I always really want to remind them that not everybody going to look like the beauty standard that always described in every book. Mm -hmm. So the beauty standard mm -hmm. was described by, you know, Italian artists, mm -hmm. all the measurements mm -hmm. based on European white face. Yeah. It does yeah. not fit everybody. Yes. Yes. You know, I cannot take a Nigerian girl, make her look like that. Yes. It's not going to look cute either, mm -hmm. even, right. even if I tried. Yes. So it's learning true mm -hmm. beauty standards for different ethnicities mm -hmm. and also learning how not to overdo things. Yes. Yes. Right. Less is more. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Less is more. Less is more Less sometimes. Is more. Just, you know, I, I tell it into the other injectors, if you have it on the shelf, don't put it in your face. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So more natural beauty. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I really feel like we changed a lot. Even though I'm totally for having surgery. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just like, do that surgery to people. Yeah. But we don't pull thing, things the same way. You know, they were kind of over pulled back in those days. Yeah. They thought like the more you pull, the better it's going to be. Mm. That's not how it is right now. Yeah. Like you said, I'm sure the technology piece, et cetera, has come a long way. But that was just was what I thought it was all about. But now, like you said, less is more, more natural. The culture has changed based on really the technology and techniques that and have changed. And also the knowledge with social media, we can learn so much more. Yeah. You know, maybe people were doing something more natural because in my opinion, good filler, good Botox is the one that nobody else can tell you had. Right, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. if nobody talks about it, yeah, then nobody knows you had it until yeah. somebody goes and pulls that face up. Yeah. Or puts humongous breast or right. something like that. Something yeah. crazy, you know, the extremes. The extreme. But you didn't see the natural work because yeah. nobody spoke about it. But now we can actually advertise it. We can educate people about right. it. We can show it. Yeah. We have the platform. That's right. That's right. And as you think about, again, like you said, just coming of age, if you will, as it relates to kind of this culture. What, what are you saying? Like women that are coming in that may be 40 plus, what, what are they asking for? What are they talking to you about or trying to get research around? And I know it differs for, for everyone, but generally, what are you saying? A lot of people do want to go non-surgical, so mm -hmm. minimizing downtime. Everybody's very busy. Nobody wants to have procedures that would mm -hmm. have them hold up, you know, for one month somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so everybody's go, go, go. Yeah. Uh, we also see much younger crowd now coming in because mm. the millennials, or maybe whatever, the younger generation, yeah. you know, 20, yeah. right. 30, right. they don't want to wrinkle. They do mm. not want to move. They want to be frozen. Wow. More than the 40 plus population. Wow. So 40 yeah. plus say, I just want to be natural. I just want to mm -hmm. have less wrinkles. I want to yeah. have less, you know, visible lines. But it's okay for movement. You yeah. know, yeah. I need to have my eyebrow. Like how they're going to know I'm mad. Like I need to move that. <laughs> right. um, but the younger crowd comes in. I never, ever want to see wrinkle in my face. Freeze me. Wow. Now that's interesting. Now I have heard more and more, you know, younger uh, folks are kind of going in and, and asking about cosmetic surgery or having it done. But that's interesting that they just totally want to be. Because how do you know just your like facial plastic, expression? Just a doll. Yeah, like, like you said, how do you know if you're smiling or how do you show your emotions? They'll send you an emoji. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about emojis earlier. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's, that's interesting that, uh, and it could be the whole social media piece, as you mentioned, where, you know, with someone like me, who's 50 plus, like, of course, I'm into social media now, but, you know, back in the day when I was younger, it wasn't even around. So, Correct. so maybe they're just seeing it more of, you know, I want to be truly being influenced by others. Yeah. Yeah. What is your, what's, what's your counsel to them? And, and I know at the end of the day, it's their decision. But what's your counsel? I mean, certain things are their decision, um, but I do turn away some of the patients. If they come in, I feel like their request is unreasonable for their age group mm. or for what they're trying to 
do, yeah. I, yeah. I will turn them away. Uh -huh. um, you know, basic things like Botox and filler to a certain degree is fine. You know, mm -hmm. younger mm -hmm. crowd usually needs a little filler like in their lips. They want mm -hmm. a slightly bigger lip, mm -hmm. a little plumper. Sure, that's cute. That's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, a little Botox. You know, I usually recommend for everyone to start Botox around 30, 33. Mm -hmm. That's when we really stop making collagen as mm -hmm. much and mm -hmm. we start seeing those stationary lines. Mm -hmm. But um, for younger crowd, you know, if they feel like they're moving too much, I'm okay doing a little bit, little baby, mm -hmm. baby, baby Botox. Yeah. 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 Um, but I do try to give them a little counsel and, and, you know, you don't need this. This is normal. This is normal anatomy. This mm -hmm. is being female. This, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. certain yeah. things are normal. Yeah, exactly. And you want to And I try to educate. That. If they yeah. really feel strongly about it, I'm sure they're going to find someone who's going to operate on them. Right. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I do my best. So now, why do you think, I know we kind of, you mentioned it earlier around, it's kind of taboo, or it was, about even just talking about cosmetic surgery. Right. Even though, you know, people may be researching, and I know that even some women, I've had conversation with them, um, and they're saying, hey, researching a little, et cetera, et cetera, but, you know, not really telling the masses, if you will. So why do you think we're a little more comfortable now kind of talking about it, or are people comfortable? I don't know. It depends who the person, you know, the, some people are completely comfortable and post it all on social media. You know, they yeah. post their journey yeah. and they totally fine showing everything. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's always crowd who does not want their husband to know, you know, yeah, yeah, have like Uber driver pretend or something <laughs> to pick them up. Well, that's, in that's interesting. <laughs> so you've had some patients where they don't even want their partner. Sometimes. Okay. It's, it's more rare now. I think right now things are so much more open. I think, again, it's social media and it just acceptance that this is part of life and we're going to do this mm -hmm. and it's okay to do, you know. Mm -hmm. And I obviously, I think it's completely fine to do in the right candidate. Right. right. You have to make sure that you're the right candidate for the right mm -hmm. procedure. So I right. do a lot of teaching and educating about it. Good. Um, but it's a long road because there's a lot of people who just try to do surgery just to do surgery. Yeah. And there's a lot of misinformation about it out there. Right. So I feel like my job as a surgeon, and I know I share the same views with my partners mm -hmm. who do the same thing, mm -hmm. to truly educate and not yeah. do unnecessary surgery. Correct. Because every unnecessary Correct. surgery always leads to unnecessary complications. Yeah. And True. I go by that. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Those guidelines that you, that you go by. Because, I mean... Again, people are coming to you because you are the expert. And I really love what you said about the education and making sure it's the right thing. And you may turn some people away if it's just, absolutely, you know, not the right thing for them to do. So, so what about those non-invasive kind of procedures? Could you give us some examples of those? I know like a filler is considered kind of non-invasive. Minimally, yeah, because so. we're injecting stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but office procedures, like very basic maintenance uh, procedures are great. I feel like it's a great tool, again, in the right hands with the right yeah. restraint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I always believe that the doctor should be able to do the full spectrum. Mm -hmm. So I can, uh, when somebody comes in, I can say, okay, for you, we can do non-surgical. For you, I can do something in between. And for you, you need the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if somebody only does one thing, they're always going to re recommend to you that one thing. So right. you have to be conscious of that and mm -hmm. understand that if you're going to a smaller place. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's nothing bad about smaller place, but yeah, you have to yeah. know that sometimes you might have to find several providers for yourself. Okay. Uh, because if place only does Botox and fillers, you're only going to get Botox and fillers. Right. Right. If place has only one laser, you're always going to get offered that same laser. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. basic finances. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you go to place that have several things that they can offer to you, they mm -hmm. can offer everything. So the non-invasive stuff is great as preventative measure. I'll, that's mm -hmm. why I like to start fillers uh, maybe in 40s, mm -hmm. Botox a little earlier to mm -hmm. try to prevent it. Gotcha. So if we're doing some stimulation on the skin to produce more collagen elastin, you'll hear it in any skincare, yep. any yep. kind of cosmetic yeah. things, mm -hmm. producing collagen elastin, stimulating collagen production, because we stop making it after 30. For most of us, some mm -hmm. of us are luckier genetically than others. <laughs> some people don't make those wrinkles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But ideas to stimulate, how are you going to stimulate those collagen and elastin production, that's different mm -hmm. procedures, lasers, microneedling, different okay. type of microneedling procedures, all of that is made to improve quality of skin. Got it. And fillers improving underneath the skin. 
Gotcha. Right? It fills up the empty spots because mm -hmm. we lose volume as we get older. We want to mm -hmm. fill certain things up. But again, not to overfill. Yeah. Exactly. If the envelope is too big, then we'll have to cut the envelope. Right. Exactly. Yes. Right. Exactly. We don't want to keep filling it to just make it bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. At some point, we need to cut. Right. And so those non-invasive procedures are great for me for maintenance. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what I've been doing to myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'm still 25. <laughs> She's 25. I'm and 25. Holding, guys. <laughs> the last 20 years. <laughs> so, which was you just mentioned something which was interesting. There are some procedures external, like you said, which were the was it the My laser? Okay, lasers? Okay, okay. Yeah, and they're then different the kinds. the injections, of course, more mm -hmm. internal. Mm -hmm. to Do you? prefer one over the other. Again, I, it depends on the person I know, but from a, a medical kind of perspective? It, it's not one or the other, same as it's not filler or Botox, it's both, it's okay. all three. Because everything does slightly different thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. As we lose volume and things kind of start to slide down with gravity, yeah. we need to fill them back up, that's filler. But if your skin is wrinkly and maybe has discoloration and sun damage, mm -hmm. well, filler not gonna help that. Right. Right. So it's not one or the other. Okay. It's everything. I gotcha. And then what about, because you hear about this a lot, the um, crepe, crepe, crepe skin. Like crepey skin? Crepey skin. Yeah, can you give us... concert concept for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> Thankfully. Uh, but explain that. It's us. just aging skin that's really losing a lot of collagen elastin. So you start seeing, it's not necessarily a wrinkle, like when we make a face wrinkle, it's yeah. the whole skin is very, very crepey. It's, mm -hmm. it's just uh, thin. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times if you touch, it's like paper thin. Mm -hmm. I know that yeah. as a surgeon, I don't like working with that kind of skin because sewing it together is kind of hard. Wow. Um, so again, that's the skin. It's usually sun damaged skin, mm. you know, skin that really took a lot of damage over the years. Okay. And okay. aging, it happens. So mm -hmm. you start seeing that in somebody of any uh, generation, basically, once we get over like 80, yeah. uh, it catches up to people and it's really th this just very thin yeah. skin. So it just gets, I guess as we age, it just gets thinner. Thinner, thinner less collagen formation, yeah. So yeah. the best thing is to prevent it from happening. Yeah. Uh, but if it's already there, you know, a few things we can do again, some lasers, some, some stimulation procedures. Mm -hmm. Um, if we do, do surgery on patient, let's say to cut off extra skin, mm -hmm. usually I still do or recommend something for the skin quality, still some okay. kind of, again, stimulation. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mm -hmm. don't want to say any particular brand names because there's so many right. out there. Exactly. There's, you yeah. know, so many CO2 lasers. There's mm -hmm. so many microneedling uh, machines. You know, every mm -hmm. company has their own. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't matter. If you trust your doctor, um, you talk to them what yeah. they have. Yeah. And then kind of go from there. Right. And see, and I didn't even know micro needling. needling. I just thought that was for your brows. Well, they use almost like a micro needling uh, for ombre brows. The the pigment mm -hmm. pigmenting it's kind of like a tattoo. Okay. But micro needling, they're different. There's mechanical micro needling, and then mm -hmm. those radio frequency type of micro needling. Okay. So micro needling is basically a whole bunch of little needles penetrate your skin. Okay. And wait a minute, you put the needles into the skin. But it's like and a little machine. It's a, almost like a little sewing machine, oh. but there'll be like 12 needles at the tip of the device. Mm -hmm. And those needles go in and out, in and out, in and out. Oh, as so you move like them around, the, oh. mm -hmm. you move them around, but the needles go in and out. Oh. And every time they penetrate the skin, they're causing injury on purpose. We want those little micro channels to form. Okay. And as your body tries to heal them, mm -hmm. it will make more collagen. We heal our wounds by making more collagen in them. Oh, and so those little tiny needles will have to heal and a lot of times we'll add extra serums or your mm -hmm. own PRP or exosomes now, which is uh, basically a whole bunch of healing factors mm -hmm. that penetrate through those little channels mm -hmm. deeper into your skin to help it heal better. Oh, um, does that hurt though? We'll numb you up. <laughs> she said don't numb us up. We'll okay. numb you up. <laughs> um, and then we take that microneedle into next level. So microneedling, needles penetrate, and then we deliver energy through those needles. So like a little oh. zap little okay. heat okay. and that stimulates that production of collagen even further and maybe it gives a little tightening as well on microscopic levels nothing major yeah yeah so so we can kind of recreate or 
I don't know if recreate is the right word for collagen. Like we can help it stimulate. To, for your body to know, okay. oh, I got to go over there and fix that. Okay. And it's kind of a reminder for your body to get there and start fixing those little holes and we'll make hundreds of them, right? Okay. Uh, thousands probably because uh, mm -hmm. every time we penetrate, it's not one needle, it's like 40, 25, different devices, has number, different number of needles okay. and we do it okay. over and over and over again. Okay. And so it's all that microscopic healing that needs to happen. Wow. And so your body goes and fixes it and it improves your skin quality, gets mm -hmm. more glow. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if there's a pigmentation that we didn't like, it tends to fix that as well, because mm -hmm. all those healing cells comes and starts just cleaning that whole area up. So your body is kind of healing itself exactly. through that. Okay. Yes. Learning a lot, learning a lot. And you mentioned just a few minutes ago about like facial expressions mm -hmm. here. So I've always thought, but I kind of heard, but I've always kind of thought too, like, wrinkles are wrinkles right fine lines are fine lines but sometimes your facial mm -hmm. expressions can can cause that absolutely that's how okay. we make wrinkles okay okay because it's I'm your just, muscles you know. underneath you know our muscles are very expressive right and mm -hmm. depends what you like you talk with your forehead mm -hmm. you know i used to have this thinking wrinkle when mm -hmm. i was a kid because mm -hmm. my mom would come up to me and go stop that <laughs> Stop that. Stop that. Well, I was little. I remember. Stop I was little. Stop that thinking. Stop that thinking. You're going to have a wrinkle there. Like, literally. I was like a kid. Okay. And you said, I, I, uh, I talk with, what did you say? Forehead. With my Some forehead. people do the forehead thing. Some people do the thing. Mm -hmm. Right? Some people do the mouth thing where they kind of go, mm-hmm, and they, 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 they oh. curl the, the, the mouth down. So it depends on your expressions and, and your manner of speaking. Okay. You're going to have different way you're going to create the wrinkle. And over okay. the years of doing it over and over and over again, it's like a piece of plastic that you're going to do this to right. all the time. Right. And eventually you get that deep crease where that mm -hmm. happens. But it happens because your muscle underneath the skin is, is moving. Okay. And skin attached to the muscle. So with that, you're going to get, you're gonna get the wrinkle. Fine. So I see why I started up here. Because that, I guess I talk you think, with my... You think a lot. <laughs> okay. I talk with my forehead. Okay. So over time, it just adds up. Yeah. And then smile lines, same thing, the little smile lines that yep. go this way. Because with smile, they're good lines. They're happy lines. Yeah. They're yeah. smile lines. But some people don't like them if they get mm -hmm. too deep. Yeah. So same thing. That's why we do Botox or similar medication mm -hmm. around the eyes to soften those muscles. So when you smile, they don't crinkle as much. So okay. we can use Botox for a lot of those expressions. Okay. And so, then the parentheses, I get, I, I've heard mm -hmm. they're called parentheses around here, right? Is that so, from smi Some of them. Some, so okay. some of it is smiling. Mm -hmm. And as we get older, sometimes our cheeks kind of go down a little bit. Our volume starts to slide down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so these become more prominent. Got it. So these we have to actually, this is the filler. That's where we have to put the filler back up in your cheeks to bring the these lines mm -hmm. up. But we have to remember that smile lines are normal. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people come in and they try to really get rid of their smile lines here. They don't want mm -hmm. it at all. Hmm. <laughs> oh, we don't want And it doesn't look cute. So I always yeah, have to remind not... people, I was like, it's like we can make them less pronounced. Maybe mm -hmm. if there's a deep wrinkle inside the smile line, we can soften that up. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to get rid of it because that's, that's your face. Right. That's like, not how, even, how am I going to recognize you then? Like, <laughs> it's not natural not to have you just, a Unless smile you're a person line. that just... Unless Never, you're a baby. ever, ever smiles. Right. <laughs> if you're a baby, you know, babies smile, they don't have, they kind of fool, but they have the baby face. Yeah. Um, but for adults to have that baby face is freaky. Yeah. So, yeah. and then very deep marionette lines, this is the lines go from the mouth down here. That's okay. from, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh. Mm. So there we can do a little Botox to soften that out. And then mm -hmm. if it's already visible, then I can do both Botox and filler to smooth okay. that out. Okay. So it's a combination of things. And, uh, and it's the muscles behind, like you said, the skin is attached to the muscles. So, mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. So, what do you think the biggest myth about cosmetic surgery is that you've kind of heard or had a question around? Well, there are a few. I mean, we all heard a myth about implants, that you have to redo them every 10 years. That's mm -hmm. not true. Mm -hmm. We all heard that facelift will make you not be able to move your mouth. Mm -hmm. um, also not true. If mm -hmm. it's done correctly, you should look very natural and like yourself, just mm -hmm. younger version mm -hmm. of yourself. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we all have heard that Botox, if you do neurotoxin of any sort, Botox is a neurotoxin. Mm -hmm. If you do okay, that... Okay, what's a neurotoxin? Neurotox well, botulinum toxin originally is a neurotoxin, so it's mm -hmm. actually uh, made by bacteria. Mm. Uh, and if, for example, a baby eats part of that neurotoxin usually found in honey, Mm. Baby can become a floppy baby. That's what we learn in medical school. Floppy baby, paralyzed baby, basically mm. <laughs> cannot mm. breathe. Mm. But that's huge amounts. Yeah. But the little tiny versions of that botulinum toxin is what we inject. Okay. Uh, and it paralyzes your muscle mm -hmm. temporarily. Right. So yeah. usually it's about three months. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, you are unable to move the muscle. You cannot move the muscle. You cannot make a wrinkle, and mm -hmm. so on. Okay. Uh, so the, the rumor out there was that if you start using Botox, then as soon as you stop, you're going to like age 25 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it's going to make things worse. Yeah. It doesn't. It just takes you back to where you used to be. To where you were. Once yeah. it wears off and you start moving your muscles again, you're back to where you started. Mm -hmm. um, but I think people feel like, you know, for the three months that you couldn't move, mm -hmm. you look smoother, you look younger, right? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you look in the mirror and you see the wrinkles from three months ago and you're like, right. whoa. <laughs> too much right so it doesn't make right. things worse yeah yeah um but there is a lot of rumors out there yeah. i think the idea is just really to try to talk to somebody yeah. who understands how it works who's not going to overdo it right just because you want to pay money mm -hmm. i've seen that okay uh, somebody comes like i need filler it's been three months i need filler again it's been three months i'm like well well fillers once you get to happy place in the filler, you do it like once a year, maybe. Yeah, okay. You don't do filler every three months. Well, my other place used to do that. I was like, you kept paying money. That's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so don't just trust everybody blindly. Okay. So, yeah. So, again, like you said, first of all, you have to be educated and you got to research things because sometimes it's just a little... A little much, and I understand to each There's his own. Lot. To There's each his lot. own, whatever you want to do, that's fine. But your recommendation, and, and, and kind of last question before we get into a, a little game here, um, is if people are looking for answers and want to research, et cetera, what's the best path for them to take? I want to say reading more than mm -hmm. influencer watching. Yeah. Yeah. You have to understand what, what people put in your face. You have to mm -hmm. understand the products yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, yes, your friend might have had this and the other friend might have had this. And, you know, because people will take advantage of you mm -hmm. sometimes. And if you don't understand what's being placed in your face or in your body, mm -hmm. um, you might not like the result. So you yeah. really have to understand it and take it gradual. Not everything going to happen overnight. Yeah. You didn't get, let's say, if you're 15, you got never, you know, have wrinkles, never had anything done to you and you come mm -hmm. up. We cannot fix it overnight. Yeah. It's going to be a gradual process. Mm -hmm. give, give it some time. Be mm -hmm. prepared for it. Or better yet, start earlier. Mm -hmm. But if you already got 20 years behind, <laughs> right, right. don't expect one procedure fix yeah. everything. Right. It's not going to happen. Yeah. So a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. Be patient. Mm -hmm. And read. <laughs> yeah. Read. Yeah. Read. Research. I mean, uh, just like we research anything, guys. You know, you research even if you're having some type of surgery or, or whatever, or, you know, if you have a new, a new boo, you go research that person. So anything that we do, again, to your point, we just need to make sure education is right. the key. Education Absolutely. is the key. Thank you. Thank you. This has been really informative. Appreciate it. Now we got a little game though, before we end, we're going to end here in a second. And it's called like crush. It, it's a good one. <laughs> crush the negativity. Okay, so what it is, is I'm going to say a word, question, or phrase that maybe society has deemed negative as women age, and then I want you to flip the script and say something positive about it. So an example that I've used before is menopause, and then I would say a natural part of life. So I'm just going to say a word or a phrase. It's easy. It's easy. <laughs> uh, like, you know, speaking to Russia, you to, right? I want to... <laughs> I want you to flip the script. Okay, this is something you we kind of just talked about. Wrinkles. Can be fixed with Botox. Ah! Somebody else said that too. <laughs> okay, okay. That's 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 what you that's that's cool. That's to me it's cool. positive. That, <laughs> yes. I get it. I get it. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, you know, you look good. 
for your age. Thank you. <laughs> I did it myself. <laughs> I always have to expound on that because it's like that's one of the questions like that kind of irks me because it's like you're saying, well, how am I supposed to look at this age when it's like, oh, you look good for your age. So, yeah. I'll say just thank that. you. That's <laughs> great. <laughs> just, there's a way. There's a way. It's the you pause. It. Yeah, it's the, it's the pause, like, for your age. So, okay, last question. Uh, don't you think you're too old to wear that now? Oh, no, don't get the start on that. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Expound, please. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram. You'll see ah! what I mean. <laughs> You're like, follow her on Instagram. This is how I go to work. Oh, and I love, I love the boots. This I is how I boots. operate on you. Not... Um, <laughs> yes, so I don't feel like there is age appropriate attire. I feel like it's a societal concept. So wear whatever you want. Yeah, as long as you feel good in it. As long as you feel yeah. comfortable. Now, if I tell you, girl, cover it up, you just come to me, I'll fix it, and you can wear whatever you want. <laughs> But you're right, you know, as long as I think as you're it's a society, you know, yeah, it, the, yeah. the, 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 whether it's cultural, certain obviously cultures have something more appropriate than the others. Mm -hmm. I think we do have to have a concept of, you know, maybe more respectful to whatever you're going. Like you're going to church, eh, you know, maybe throw some on. <laughs> but <laughs> everywhere else, no, don't tell me age has a factor to it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, thank you, Dr. Angelina. You. Again, this was, this was great. I appreciate you being here. We'll have to have you back on again Absolutely. and continue to, again, demystify kind of the myths around this. So, because you, you, you know, you're killing it. You guys are like, you said, you're continuing to grow in your practice. So it looks like people are asking and researching about this particular topic. So Absolutely. it's great that there are doctors like yourself that really care about the patient versus just you know, doing it to take the money or whatever. So yeah, watch out for those. We appreciate that. Yes, watch out for those. Well, thank you, Zeal family, for joining us for this episode. As always, join us each week as we have real talk conversations around the aging journey. Zeal, Aging Redefined, your go-to for aging fabulous. Bye.